Hello, this is Citizen Participation Section C Lecture. Your prioritized standard for this one is Government Civics 34. Objectively, you can investigate means of participating in the political process. Citizens have many options when it comes to how they will participate in the political process, with voting serving as the common means, yet other ways involve varying amounts of skill, time, and resources. Some people are actively involved in campaigning for a candidate. They might create materials, organize events, seek donations, and attempt to convince people to vote for their candidate. Only about 15% of Americans actually participate in these types of campaign activities in election year, however. New forms of media actually make it easier, however, to be involved in campaigns. Uh, things like blogging, posting videos, social networking sites, donating money online with PayPal. Those things are much easier now than they have been in the past. Now, as a part of the political process, sometimes citizens demonstrate their disapproval for current government policies in a number of ways, including activities like lobbying, demonstrating, and petitioning. Now, lobbying is an attempt by an individual or a group to influence the passage of legislation by exerting direct pressure on members of the legislature. Lobbyists commonly give legislators information about a public policy issue, in the form of letters, phone calls, information sheets. Now, demonstrating, this is when a group of people meet at or march to a location in protest or support of a government action. Oftentimes, they are speakers that speak at the event. Uh, it can also take the form of picketing. Now, a petition, this is a written document signed by a large number of people demanding some form of action from a government. Oftentimes, this is required for voting initiatives to officially be considered by state or local governments. The most active means of participating in the political process is actually running for a political office yourself. Uh, if you feel like you can make a difference in your local community, this is something you should consider in the future. Instead of representative government, where people vote for their representatives in the government, on occasion our government uses direct democracy, which is where voters directly make policy decisions. Now, direct democracy is used when we see things like an initiative, a referendum, and also a recall. An initiative is a process enabling citizens to bypass their state legislatures by placing a proposed law directly on the ballot. Now, the wording of a proposed law needs to comply with statutory requirements, and the accompanying petition requires a certain number of signatures from registered voters prior to actually being included on a ballot. Uh, the exact number is going to vary by the state, but an initiative, again, that's one way. Another is through a referendum, which is a process allowing citizens to either approve or reject a law that was passed by a legislature. Now, often this is required on certain ballot measures, like changes to state constitutions, Often, after the passage of unpopular laws, petitions to overturn the new law are usually produced, and then requiring referendum votes for the final verdict on what would actually happen. And third, a recall, which is a procedure allowing citizens to remove and replace a public official before the end of a term of office. This differs from impeachment in that it is actually citizen-driven and uh, not requiring any specific charges. It also requires signatures on a petition to get this on a ballot also. Oftentimes, the media plays an important and major role in, the American, in American society, especially as a part of the political process. The mass media is a means of communication that reaches large, widely dispersed audiences simultaneously, which include television, newspapers, magazines, radio, and the Internet. People acquire most of their information they know about the government and politics through the media. Now, while television is the primary source of gaining political information, the internet has actually continued to grow in importance and actually passed newspapers in 2008 to become the number two source. Increasingly, people gain information from social networking sites like Facebook and Twitter, yet you should be aware of gaining information in this matter, as this is often unsourced and can lead to misinformation. For instance, uh, the fake news campaigns like this were used during the 2016 presidential election where the Russian government attacked social networking sites with manufactured news stories in an effort to sow discourse in our political process. 
Now, the media, by exercising its constitutional right to freedom of the press, is important to the success of the nation by continually, continually scrutinizing the government and providing the public with accurate and impartial information that it can act on accordingly. The media's influence on politics is the most visible in electoral politics and helping shape what's called the public agenda, which are societal problems that political leaders and citizens agree need government attention. While those actively involved in politics may not be influenced by the media, since elections are often decided by the politically uncommitted voters, the power of the media in elections can actually be quite substantial. Government officials attempt to use the media to the best of their ability to better communicate with the general public. Politicians capable of using the media to their benefit prove to be more successful than those that do not. Through the media's ability to focus the public's attention on particular issues while ignoring or possibly downplaying others, they can help determine what the government actually focuses on. The media can also provide checks against the government by focusing attention on instances when it actually abuses power. Some critics actually accuse the media of emphasizing scandals and high interest stories that can actually help gain advertisers at the expense of more important issues. The media guides debate by reporting on how the public feels about major issues through public opinion polls, which are devices that attempt to collect information by asking people questions. Now, public opinion polls use scientific polling techniques, which involve extremely complex processes that make them more reliable than other methods. At times, special interest groups might actually even produce these polls, but many times the news media conducts them internally. Major news outlets commonly print, televise, report, and increasingly stream public coverage, which provides a valuable tool during elections. The media has many candidates, or the media has made, rather, candidates far less dependent on party organizations, allowing candidates to appeal directly to voters. It has made it easier for candidates with only loose party connections to successfully run for office. Donald Trump! Modern campaigns commonly emphasize television exposure, orchestrating possibly sound bites that will be used for the evening news. While candidates spend enormous amounts of money on campaign advertisements, the media gives voters the ability to find more unbiased information about candidates. It should be noted, finding unbiased uh, information can sometimes be hard to come by. Uh, if you're getting your information from Fox News, generally that is a pro-Republican uh, news source. If you're getting information from MSNBC, that's usually a pro-democratic uh, news source. Media reporting allows voters to learn about the major policy differences between candidates. The tools of the mass media make it easier to research candidates in local, state, and national elections. This concludes Citizen Participation Section C lecture. Our prioritized standard again was Government Civics 34. And objectively, now you can investigate means of participating in the political process.